In the previous video, we looked at processing the payroll for people who are paid the same week in, week out. It may be that your payroll, you may have casual employees, you may have employees that you want to fill out the timesheet, etc. So we'll look at how to pay employees entering timesheets. At the top of the command center, I've got a button that says enter timesheets. If I click on that, it'll bring me up a timesheet looking very blank. I need to put in the employee's name. Uh, I have a new employee, a Mr. Charlie Charlesworth. So you make it the current week by pressing the arrow forward button and it takes me on to the current week. It needs to know the payroll categories. I don't have any set up at the moment showing. If I click on payroll categories, up comes the down arrow. Mr. Charlie Charlesworth only gets base hourly. He's a casual employee. If I click use category, I will now get the base hourly put in there. It gives me the opportunity to put in jobs and various notes as to what has been happening. And then all I need to do now is to put in the hours for the days he actually worked. Looking at his timesheet, I can see that on Monday he worked five, on Tuesday he worked eight, on Wednesday he worked another five, and he worked another five, giving him a total of 23 hours for the week. Having entered Charlie Charlesworth's hours, all 23 of them, I click OK and it takes me onto the command centre again and all I need to do now is to process the payroll. I've selected the pay period. It's the 17th of August, the actual payment date today. The pay period starting on the 11th and the pay period end is the 17th today. It tells me down here that the pay basis is hourly and the weekly hours is 38. I must remember to make sure that when I'm setting up somebody who is going to be paid on a timesheet, that their standard hours are set to zero. 38 is the default that is my normal for hourly pays, or for all workers. The actual timesheet hours is the correct amount as per his timesheet. If I want to check that, I click on the white arrow for his timesheet, and then I click next and it brings up a list of all the people to be paid. In a previous video, I actually paid Anne Abel, Bill Baker and Harry Lee, so I'll untick those. And I'm now left with Charlie Charlesworth. If I click on the white arrow, it will show me that his base hourly is the 23 hours that he normally worked. He's paid $20 an hour, which gives him the $460. It calculated his PAYG. And because his superannuation kicks in at $450 for the month, he actually gets the superannuation guarantee. Click OK. And all I've got to do now is to click Record. You're about to record a paycheck. Thank you. Continue. I've successfully recorded a paycheck. And it tells me that I can now print his paycheck. If I click print, I'll go next. And I can print or email the pay slip to him as well. Click finish. And that's it. The payroll is now completed for a timesheet employee. Using timesheets, it's normally a matter of, do I have the same people turning up day in, day out, week in, week out, year in, year out? normally working a standard working week, or do I have casuals? It may be that you want to put in that somebody is on holiday or take some sick leave off and uh, to record it correctly. You can do this using a timesheet. So for example, if Anne Abel had a day off sick, we would simply go in and enter a timesheet for Anne And her payroll categories would normally be a base hourly. We'll use that category. And she would also have a base salary. So if she was in on 
uh, a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then had Thursday and Friday off sick, we would have 7.6, that's a fifth of uh, the 38 hours. NYOB uses decimals, not 15 or 25 or 30 or 45 for its minutes. It uses 0.6 of an hour, which is actually 36 minutes. 7.6 on the Tuesday and 7.6 on the Wednesday. And she took two days sick pay, use that category. And we tab across until we get to the Thursday, 7.6, and the Friday, 7.6. Which now gives me 22.8 hours of normal pay for the base hourly and 15.2 hours taken off in sick pay. I click OK. And then when I process the payroll this time, I have one there for Anne Able, which I'm going to process. Click Next. And if I click on the white arrow, it will show me that she has 60.8 hours for base hourly, which I know is wrong and I know why it's wrong, and sick pay is 15.2 hours. The reason the 60.8 hours is wrong is because her normal pay has 38 standard hours and it automatically adds the additional hours that came off the timesheet. I'll now fix that to 22.8 hours. It does the recalculation automatically for me, etc. You'll notice in front of the sick pay hours of 15.2, there is a little white arrow. If you click on the white arrow, it brings up an area where you can actually put some notes as to what the reason for the sick or personal leave was. Not feeling well. That will do me fine. Click OK. We now have a record on her file as to what time she took off as sick and also the reason she took it off as sick. Click OK and we could process the rest of the payroll as normal. We click Record. We could click Continue. The number of paychecks successfully recorded is three. Click OK. I click on Prepare Payments and there are my payments waiting to be made. I can either click each one individually or I can click on the little tick box at the, bot the top. That will tick them all. And then I click Bank File. I want to create a bank file so that I can then use that bank file with my banking software and transmit these payments to the bank. If I click on Bank File, the transaction will be recorded before the bank file is created, which is what I want to happen, and click OK. It then asks me where do I wish to save the file. I would normally have a folder called Bank Files. I'll create it now. And having created it, it's now asking for a file name. ABC doesn't really mean much to me. That's merely the initials from the bank, another banking corporation. What I would normally do is to get rid of the first three letters and I normally put in the date, the date on which I create the bank file, which in this particular case will be the 17th of August 2012. When I'm entering that date, I put in the year, the month and the day. And that, if I'm looking for them later, makes it easier to find as they'll then be in date order. If I put them in the other way around, I'll get all the firsts of each month, followed by all the seconds of each month. Click Save, and then I know exactly where the file is, so that when I open my banking software, I know exactly where to go and browse for it. I'll cancel out of there, and I'll click Next. I can now print or email the payslips. If I click on Print or Email Payslips, I can check the list of emails that I need to send out and I can tick them all and then I click send email. And having emailed all our pay slips, we're back on the print employee pay slip screen. We simply press finish and that's it, another payroll done.